guys. It's Monday. Um, it was so good to see you guys on Friday, most of you that came. And if you didn't get to join us on Friday, we will have another Zoom again on Friday at 1.30. And we'll talk about who won the March Madness, um, which book won March Madness. So I hope you guys can be there for that. Um, but today we're going to continue on The Wild Robot. And we are on Chapter 43. And Chapter 43 is called The Gosling Takes Off. It must be hard to have a robot for a mother. I think the hardest part for Bright Bill was all the mystery that surrounded Roz. Where had she come from? What was it like to be a robot? Would she always be there for him? These questions filled the gosling's mind and his feelings for his mother swung between love and confusion and anger. I'm sure many of you know what that's like. Roz could sense that Bright Bill was struggling and so she spent a lot of time talking with him about families and geese and robots. Are there other robots on the island? said the gosling during one of their talks. He'd been sitting beside his mother in the garden, but now stood and faced her. Yes, there are others on the island, said Roz, but they are inoperative. Inoperative? For a robot, being inoperative is like being dead. Where are the dead robots? They are on the northern shore. I want to see them. I do not think that's a good idea. Why not? You are still a gosling. You are too young to see dead robots. I will take you to see them when you are older. Mama, I'm not a gosling anymore, Bright Bill puffed out his chest. I'm already four months old. I am sorry, said Roz, but you cannot go. Bright Bill stomped around the garden and squawked. This isn't fair. I promise I will take you to see them when you are older, said the robot. But I want to go now. Please calm down. You can't even fly. I could take off and you wouldn't be able to stop me. Ross stood, and her long shadow fell across her son. The gosling could feel his emotions swinging wildly, and for a moment he was actually afraid of his own mother. Without thinking, he sprinted toward the pond, beat his wings, and flew away. Let me see the picture here. Um, Roz is over here, and you can see her kind of watching as Bright Bill flies away. Chapter 44, The Runaway your son will be fine, said Loudwing. You know how they are at this age. I do not know, said Roz. Please tell me how they are at this age. Oh, right. Well, Bright Bill's growing up fast. It's only natural for adolescent goslings to be a little mm, moody. He just needs to be alone for a while. You've raised a wonderful son. I know he'll come home soon. Try not to worry. But Roz did worry. At least she worried as much as a robot is capable of worrying. Bright Bill had never run away or flown away, and suddenly Roz was computing all the things that could go wrong. A violent storm, a broken wing, a predator. She had to find her son before something bad happened. There was only one place Bright Bill could have gone, the robot gravesite. So Roz galloped northward. She leaped over rocks and ducked under branches and charged through meadows without ever slowing her pace. She raced all the way across the island until she finally stepped on the sea cliffs above the gravesite. And there was Bright Bill. Perched on the edge, looking at the robot parts scattered on the shore below, his eyes were wet. Don't be angry, he said as his mother walked over. I'm not angry, but you shouldn't have flown off like that. You could have gotten hurt or worse. I was worried sick. I'm sorry, Mama. It is okay, said Roz. It is only natural for goslings your age to be a little moody. Mama, I need to understand what you are and I think it might help to see those other robots. You are right, it might help. Why are you not down there? I was about to go, said Bright Bill, but I got nervous. I want you to go with me. Let us go down there, said Roz, together. Here's a picture of Roz running across the island trying to get to Bright Bill. Chapter, tw uh, chapter 45, The Dead Robots. The gosling floated on the breeze beside his mother as she climbed down the cliffside. Down they went, past ledges and seagulls and tough little trees, until they were standing on the rocky shore with the cliffs looming behind them. The gravesite had changed. Roz's crate was gone, lost to weather or waves. Some of the robot parts were gone too. Other parts were gritty with sand or were tangled in seaweed or were inhabited by small scuttling creatures. One smashed torso still had a head and legs attached. Roz and Bright Bill huddled around the corpse and studied the mess of tubes spilling out. This thing used to look like you, said Bright Bill. Yes, we are the same type of robot, said Roz. And now this robot is dead, in a way. Will you ever die, Mama? I think so. Will I die? 
All living things die eventually. The gosling's face scrunched with worry. Brightville, you are going to live a long and happy life. Roz laid a hand on her son's back. You should not worry about death. The gosling's face relaxed, and then he pointed to a small, round shape on the back of the dead robot's head. What's that? he asked. Roz leaned in closer. That is a button, which is a knob on a piece of machinery that could be pressed to operate it. Brightbell began pressing the button. Click, click, click. Nothing is happening, he said, probably because this robot is dead. Click, click, click. Mama, do you have a button? Brightbell watched as his mother's head turned all the way around and the small button came into view. You've got one, he said. I've never noticed it before. Neither did I, said the robot. The gosling giggled. Oh, Mama, you have so much to learn about yourself. Roz reached for the button on her head, on her head, but her hand automatically stopped before she could touch it. She tried with her other hand, but it automatically stopped as well. It seems I cannot press the button, she said. Would you like to try? What will happen? Here's a picture of Roz and Brightbeat, Brightbill looking at the, the robot parts. I think that I will shut down, but I think you could simply press the button again to restart me. You think? squawked Brightbill. What if you're wrong? What if you wake up different? What if you never wake up? Mama, I don't want to shut you down. Roz turned her head back around and saw that Brightbill's face was once again scrunched with worry. She knelt beside him and said, Of course you do not have to shut me down. I am sorry if I scared you. Are you okay? I'm okay, Brightbill sniffled and wiped his eyes, and then he heard splashing. Otters were playing in the ocean. He had never seen otters before. He stared as they swam and dove and sloshed around with each other. They seemed to be having a ridiculous amount of fun, and suddenly the gosling was smiling again. Hello, my name is Bright Bill, he shouted over the waves, and this is my mama. Her name is Roz. The last time those otters had seen Roz, they had thought she was some kind of monster. But since then, they'd heard that she was remarkably friendly and that she'd even adopted an orphaned gosling. And so the otters smiled at Roz and Bright Bill. Then they swam straight over and splashed onto the rocks. Hello there, said the biggest otter. Nice to meet you both. Actually, Roz, we've met once before, but you might not remember me. My name's Shelly. I do remember you, said the robot, but I am glad to learn your name, Shelly. You know each other, said the gosling. These otters were the first animals I ever met, said Roz. They were also the first animals who ever ran away from me. Yeah, sorry about that, said Shelly, as the other otters sniffed the robot's legs. You know, Bright Bill, when we first saw your mom, she was packed in a box and surrounded by soft, squishy stuff. Bright Bill's brow furrowed. You wouldn't believe how small she looked all folded up in there. Brightbill's nose sniffed. We thought she was dead. When we reached into the box, she came to life and climbed out looking like a sparkling monster. Brightbill's eyes welled up with tears, and then he felt his mother scoop him into her arms. Are you okay? She whispered in his ear. I think I've learned enough about robots for today, he whispered back. I am sorry, Otter, said Roz, but we really must be going. I hope I didn't upset the little guy, said Shelley. I thought he'd like to hear how he first met. Bright Bill will be fine, said Roz, using a friendly voice. We've had a very busy day and should go home. It was nice to see you again. Goodbye. Roz turned, and with her long strides, she carried her son away from the gravesite and over to the base of the sea cliffs. Would you like to sit on my shoulder as I climb, said the robot. I feel like flying, said the gosling. I'll meet you at the top. Bright Bill flapped his wings and disappeared into the sky. Roz began scaling the wall. Up she went, expertly negotiating rocky columns and ledges until she hoisted herself onto the cliff top where two young bears were waiting. And if you remember, the bears are the animals that everyone kind of stays away from. So let's start with chapter 46. The fight. Hello bears, my name is Roz. Oh, we know who you are, said the sister bear. Her voice was dripping with sarcasm. We're very happy to see you again. Yeah, we're very happy to see you again, echoed the brother bear. Why do you always repeat what I'm saying, said the sister bear to her brother. It's so annoying. I was just backing you up. Let me do the talking. Fine, you don't have to be so mean about it. The bickering bears were interrupted by the robot's friendliest voice. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? How rude of us, said the sister bear. 
My name is Nettle, and this is my little brother, Thorn. I'm not little, snapped Thorn under his breath. It's lovely to meet you both, said Roz, but I'm afraid I really must be going. And I'm afraid we can't let you do that. Nettle stepped into Roz's path. My brother and I here, we don't like monsters. I'm not a monster, I'm a robot. Whatever you are, we don't like you, said Thorn. We hear you've become very comfortable on our island, said Nettle. Now we're going to make you very uncomfortable. Yeah, now we're going to make you very uncomfortable. Stop repeating me, Thorn. Poor Roz was in serious trouble. The bears were closing in on her, but she couldn't run, she couldn't hide, and she couldn't fight. The robot didn't know what to do. But before she could do anything, there was a loud squawk and a streak of feathers. Stay away from my mama! Brightbill swooped down and skittled to a, skidded to a stop between the robot and the bears. So the rumors are true, Nettle laughed. There really is a runty gosling who thinks the robot is his mother. How can anyone be so stupid? Do yourself a favor, gosling, and fly away before you get hurt. She is right, Brightbill, said Roz. Please let me handle this. But the gosling stood his ground. He spread his wings and hopped around, ready to defend his mother. The bears roared with laughter. Then, with a flick of her paw, Nettle sent Brightbill tumbling over the ground, over and over, until he flopped onto his back and stared up at the sky, stunned. This is our island, snarled Nettle. And it's time for you to go, growled Thorn. Roz made herself as big as possible. She banged her chest and roared wild, angry sounds, but the bears were not intimidated. They roared right back, and then they attacked. Nettle pulled Roz into a fierce bear hug while Thorn clawed at her legs. The robot tried to shake free, but the bears would not let go of their prey, not this time. A cloud of dust bloomed around the trio as they thrashed closer to the edge of the cliff. All of a sudden, something burst out from the trees and onto the open cliff top. Mother Bear. She was gigantic, like a mountain of golden fur, and she was furious. It seemed like this would be the end for our robot. But Mother Bear wasn't there to join the fight. She was there to break it up. Nettle! Thorn! Get over here this instant! The young bears should have listened to their mother. Instead, they pretended not to hear her. Nettle slashed at Roz's body, and Thorn began wrestling with her foot. He grabbed the foot with both paws and forced it up from the ground. Then with every ounce of his strength, he twisted the foot around. Reader, the following events happened very quickly. First, there was a strange thwip sound as the robot's right foot popped off her leg and sailed through the air. Then everyone toppled over. Nettle and Roz fell sideways along the edge, but Thorn fell backward and tumbled right off the cliff. Do you know what the most terrible sound in the world is? It's the howl of a mother bear as she watches her cub tumble off a cliff. Mother bear's howl was so startling that it snapped Brightbill right after his, out of his stupor. Her howl was so powerful that it shook Roz's entire body. Her howl was so loud that animals heard it clear across the island. But there was no reply from Thorn. Mother Bear's howl slowly faded and she wilted to the ground. Roz watched as her detached foot sailed over the edge and plummeted down to the shore below. It fell past circling seagulls, smashing off a rock, and disappeared into the waves. And that's when the robot noticed something furry dangling from the cliffside. Thorn. His full weight hung from a tree that was rooted to the rock wall. He gripped the tree tightly in his jaws and looked up at Roz with wild, frightened, with wide, frightened eyes. There he is right there. I see Thorn, shouted Roz. Grab my legs, quick. Mother Bear and Nettle scrambled to their feet. Each bear took a leg in her mouth, and together they slowly lowered Roz head first down the cliff. Thorn whimpered through the clenched teeth as he watched the robot approach. Then he felt her strong arms wrap around him and heard her booming voice holler, Pull us up! Thorn let go of the branch and cried, Please don't drop me, Roz. I don't want to die. Don't worry, said the robot. I will not drop you. The next few minutes seemed to drag on and on. Mother Bear and Nettle kept pulling on Roz's legs, and more of the robot slowly came into view until a furry golden head finally appeared, and Thorn leaped into the embrace of his family. And that's where we're going to stop today. So Roz came face to face with the only two animals that were terrible to her. And they attacked her. But in the end, she treated them with kindness. 